Welcome to Skarn. This is a land that has been built up, fought over, raised and built up again numerous times across the ages. The peoples are hardy and tough. The land is unforgiving and harsh, and the deity is gone from the world. After the divine war, the divine races and the redeemed had a truce, but that has run up, and their shorter-lived races view the divine war as a distant memory. Skarn is changing, and along with it, our heroes. I bid thee greetings, redeemed and divine races, titan spawn and ancient ones. I am Patrick, known on the winds of change and on the beaks of birds as Patty Shanks underscore, and I am the game master for this story. This is session six of Draco Genesis Titan's Lament, taking place in Scarred Lands, a setting published by Onyx Path Publishing. This is an awesome adventure brought to you by Vorpal Tales. You can find Vorpal Tales on lots of places on the internet. Of course, we're on Twitch right here, right now. Consider giving us a follow or subscribe. Check out Twitter where we tweet daily at Vorpal Tales. A Facebook and Instagram where you can get great pictures of all our cast and GMs outside of the tabletop. A website, VorpalTales.com, where you can get all the latest news about everything we are doing and see our up-to-date calendars. A Patreon, where if you feel so inclined, you can toss a coin to us in order to make more, better, and Vorpal Tailier content. You can join wonderful other snicker snacks and slutty troves like Weapon M, Don Arnetto, and David. Finally, a Discord, where you can come hang out with us awesome humans and discuss all kinds of topics or play video games with us. I would like to thank Onyx Path Publishing for making an incredible world and setting to use to amaze and delight. Also to Astral Tabletop for being our virtual tabletop and platform for our players to roll their dice. Additionally to N8 Mid for the fantastic character sheet he created for this game. A thank you goes to Vin Sweat, a wonderful YouTube channel that has amazing music to set your adventure to. Additionally, Corporal Tales has some new sponsors we would love to tell you about. First is QUEmpire.com, a small company making original dice and products for your favorite RPGs and card games. Use code VORPLETALES for 10% off. Next is the Deck of Benny, known for their various reference cards, but also for creating the Humblewood and Hecna campaign settings. Visit VORPLETALES.com, click on our affiliate link, and anything you purchase, a portion of it will benefit the show. Finally is Gemhammer and Sons, an RPG supplement store that has everything from Decks of Wonder to Decks of Illusion to Dice. Once again, use discount code VORPLETALES for 10% off. And now, dear viewers, meet our intrepid adventurers who look to explore, spelunk, socialize, and bring their influence onto the world of Scar. Please state your name, where people can find you on the internet, and who you will be playing tonight. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I am Dwayne at Made of Kimchi on the internet, and tonight I will be playing Asathi Artificer Susa with her little friend Brillo in tow. I forgot about that. Hey everybody, I'm Ever. My pronouns are they, them. You can find me all over the internet as Changeling Ever. And tonight I will be playing Yanei, who is still discovering how they would like to identify. Just don't call them a girl. Or else. Hey everybody, I'm Ki, and tonight I'll be playing Drahana whose pronouns are she, her, um, oh my goodness, she, her, um, and she's just kind of like, cool, stuff's happening, maybe someone will die, who knows. Well, this group is most likely going to happen. Um, hello everybody, I am, uh, Steve, uh, you can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade, tonight I'll be playing the Malfoon, our... Not quite as moody as you nigh elf. And I am playing. And I am Devin. You can find me online at Sword of Sullies. And tonight I am playing the uh, Paladin Gar. And I am John, otherwise known as J3 Billion, everywhere on the interwebs, but mostly here. And uh, I will be playing Davok, our uh, sorcerer, shaman, work. Thank you, adventurers. Now, 
before we forget ourselves and escape for a little while into a realm of sword and sorcery, here in the world today, many people are struggling with very real matters and combating their own monsters. February is a month of health awareness. It is American Heart Month. February is not just for in-love hearts, but healthy hearts. Make sure you are mitigating your risk of heart disease. Hand in Hand is also National Self-Check Month. Selfcheck.org, that's self-check without the K, .org, has a ton of resources available to you to check yourself for a variety of chronic diseases and conditions. The very important Black Lives Matter movement is also still going on. It is especially important this month as it is also Black History Month. We ask that you educate yourselves about icons and individuals who have shaped history, culture, politics that you may be ignorant to, and work with your fellow humans to better the world. As Thurgood Marshall, the first African-American Supreme Court Justice said, where you see wrong or inequality or injustice, speak out, because this is your country. This is your democracy. Make it, protect it, pass it on. Before you gaze further into the story of these adventurers, allow our paladin to remind you of what they have already conquered and overcome. Last session, after being forced to dispatch some human bandits, we searched for a place to rest as the openness of the area we were currently in was a terrible place to do so. We continue onwards towards what we believe to be the appropriate direction, when Terracana spots the signs of a fire. We find our way into a small farmland, and Terhana and Gar come up to it and find a small cottage, and a gazebo with freshly turned dirt. So we decide to search that and find a headstone for Eugene, loving husband and father. Seeing that it uh, seemed like a normal place, Gar decides to walk up to the door, allowing the occupants to, mean, er, to know of his presence, when he finds a guilting grandma who says they cannot stay nor help her. Gar talks her into allowing the roof to enter the back door and possibly help her issue out. Uh, he gathers the crew, and we enter into the swivel door and back, to find that her husband has returned from the soil in a somewhat undead fashion. Uh, he was not entirely mindless, as we determined, as determined by the old woman, Hillary, uh, and that she herself might have been the cause of her husband's re resurgence of life. Uh, while Gar comes up with an experiment to possibly uh, fully revive Eugene, the Malthoon attempts communication with Eugene, resulting in. Uh, after we finish a hearty meal and lay down for the night, Susa sets herself upon creating a new toy, a gigantic mechanical sheep. Uh, we find ourselves in sheer amazement of this creation, and then it behooved us to continue on our journey. Uh, while following the directions that uh, Yine and Terhana decided upon, based on their shared visions, the Malthoon gets bitten by a strange bug, very disgusting at that and it causes his arm to swell quite quickly and make him quite ill. While Yune thinks it to find plants to heal him, Gar simply grabs him and tells him to shake it off, healing him with his Lay on Hands ability. A few moments later, more bugs come out and Yune is also bitten. The group quickly runs away after Yune again, or after Gar again heals Yune. And Gar is debating burning down the whole place just because of the bugs, but Lemo Thun talks him out of it. Burning. Further on, Group. <laughs> Further on, the group finds a time-worn wagon, and Yine attempts to stealthy go up to it, but Darhana decides to just abruptly move to it at a loud pace. Uh, so Yine ends up following suit. Uh, Darhana alters a small. Uh, Darhana alerts the small single occupant uh, of their arrival, and is abruptly attacked by a little girl who unwieldily attacks her with sword. Uh, it appears that she was the sole survivor of goblin attack, and has been living there for the better part of a year, surviving all on her own, while killing some goblins in the process. The Malthoon speaks to her, and gives her understanding of a better weapon to wield, giving her a dagger, and tells her to be better off uh, leaving her home to learn more skills, and to better accomplish goal. Uh, Gar also attempts to have her follow by telling them her not to trust them and accept the help, but by using the group for the, her own benefit. She decides against needing anyone and screams us all into temporary submission and is gone when we open our eyes. Further on, in some dense brush, 
Tarhana tells everyone to stop and be quiet, but realizes she was a step too late, as a giant black panther with uh, orange glowing eyes and titan speech runes carved into it uh, with the mace-like tail has spotted us. Believing it to be end, we are all given a pleasant surprise as an equally large winged wolf attacks the panther, driving it into the offensive. Kai Chu fight! And steadily wears it down before issuing a fierce howl that frightens most of us, and it picks off the panther and begins flying off with it. As we all think ourselves safe, dripping ichor of both the beasts falls and lands directly on the Malthoon, causing him to immediately drop to the ground and go into shock as the goop has permeated his body. Not happy about that one. Well, it's a good thing you're not happy because I'm quite happy. Thank we you, Gar. Buddies, Gar. You're not dead. Yet. One can hope. Yes. So, I appreciate the summary of events. Yes, so you just witnessed two very large, very powerful, dangerous beasts battle out in front of you. Um, just when you thought you were safest, as the victor carried the the uh, loser off into the into the night. Uh, uh, yes, you have a question. More like a concern. Mm -hmm. You just turned on the sad piano music. No, that that was I just clicked on one of the music choices. I had no, I I didn't I didn't not carefully consider which one to play at all. This was not predetermined. This, uh, yes. No, no. It, really, if you think about it, this is like optimistic music in a way, kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm not that high of a level healer yet, so. Uh, yeah. No, no, this is there. fine. This is fine. Um, so yes, uh, just when you thought you were safest, the mixture of bodily fluids of the two creatures drips down in an unholy concoction upon Lamalthoon and causes him to immediately go into shock and then slip into what appears to be a coma of some sort. Yeah, it does. Does the uh, the site where the blood fell onto his body does it seem to be uh, like snaking out in like in his veins? Uh, not quite. Not it doesn't look to be like a poison of some sort. Um, it just but where it does land, you can see it has immediately burned and e eaten through the flesh, um, and actually you can see like muscle and. Uh, bone through this wound, like where this wound is now appearing. Um, and just the smell coming off of it is that of, you know, it's uh, Gar, you especially have fought in the war. Uh, you're, that, that is the smell of a dead man. Uh, Gar immediately snaps out of what he was frightened by the uh, wolf's howl and turns to see what's going on and just immediately rushes next to him and uses all of the points he has to lay on hands on him immediately so be see what before you do that so you don't waste a resource on this i don't want right. i don't want you to feel <laughs> chipped of that you go to use that and you're like no standard no standard no no holy healing is going to purge the just this concoction of thing because it's 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 if like a perfect storm of ailments came together here. It's a bit of because, and you're able to kind of put together that that wolf wasn't just a like winged wolves aren't a thing. So clearly, it's some form of titan spawn. And you saw that the the, the wounds it was inflicting on that panther-like creature were bubbling and oozing with some sort of acid or poison. That plus you know whatever ichor flows through these beings, just all that come together. This is not something that, you know, common medicine can heal. This is going to require a special kind of treatment. Um, Yane, you think that maybe there might be some herbs or 
plant life of the area that could potentially solve this problem. And you do notice that there is a small, um, a small like cluster of trees not too far off from where you guys have been laying low in this kind of tall grass you've been hiding in. Um, but there is, um, you know, you could potentially look in there and use some of your skills and knowledge of the way uh, plants and uh, herbs and those things can interact and be used for alchemical purposes. I uh, look to the, the area. Bring bring him as close as you can. I'm gonna go look for some herbs. There's there has to be something over there, uh, something to counteract this. I, I don't know. I'll I'll be back. Bring him as close to the woods as you can. What are, what are we looking for? I can help. Come with me. Pulls you along. Um. So yeah. Uh, rolling. Give me a survival check. Yeah. I'm going to pull out Lamel Thune's bedroll and open it up, kind of push him on so that we have the makeshift stretcher, and then start moving him over carefully. I only pulled okay. a dead. Uh, um, Aw. And here I'm just going to drag him. Here. Give me a uh, guard. Give I me a medicine move. check to see if you can do it correctly without uh, further injuring him. Don't drag my dead body. Hey, I got a 14. 14? Yeah, that's good enough to make a, a makeshift uh, um, stretcher. I, I would like to re-roll that um, with right. my vote from last click, time. Click the advantage, disadvantage button. 12. Really? Okay, slightly better. <clears throat> All right. Better. Uh, so, Susie, you're going with Yune? Yes. Okay. Uh, you both run over to this small little cluster of trees. It's probably, you know, 15 to 20, just enough that you can actually like go in and kind of be in the midst of trees and all, all surrounded. Um, okay. Uh, Susa, give me a perception check. Yune is just a bit faster than you, and gets into the and gets into the and into the trees before you do. And you kind of you more hear than see this weird kind of whine of energy, just kind of the the sound of uh, like. A, in modern, like in, in real world, like a capacitor charging. Oh, it's like a wah wah. Kind of, it's almost like a kind of sound. Um, and you look for Yane. Y'all, y'all are killing the soundboard over here. <laughs> uh, you look for Yane, and you do not see them. Yane, you you took your first couple steps and past the trees. And then it felt like, like while you're running, that sensation of when you miss a step on the stairs. But instead of falling forward and tumbling, it's like you were. It's almost like you were stepping through like the fourth dimension and rotating your plane. And so you, what was what was the ground is now the ceiling, and you. And just weird disorienting effect of like almost kind of like a somersault. It it you, like you like you finish the movement and you're just very disoriented. You feel like you want to throw up, but you blink a couple times. You open your eyes, and what was what was this kind of cluster of barely alive trees and the blood steps? You look around and it's just you see the greenest green grass you've ever seen your, before in your life that's still fresh with dew drops on it. And as you step through the grass, the dew drops just slide off the blades of grass up as opposed to down, up into the air, into the clouds. 
And as you follow them, you see the clouds are all kinds of color, chartreuse, magenta, periwinkle. You look around, there's several large plants almost lined up as if a gardener had planted them. And there, one is black as black, all of it. You can barely make out the leaves from the vines, but on top is just one beautifully royal blue petal. Next to it is uh, an equally, uh, almost the exact opposite of it. It's just the whitest white you've ever seen. And on top is just this uh, heavy magenta colored uh, bulb on it. And just equally astounding and different colored and crazy plants. And the majesty of kind of this area overshadows. You see just as a, a simple old woman who's bent over some of these plants. And you can see that she's tending to them and gardening them. And your footsteps almost kind of un, without your without your conscious thought guide you to this area. She kind of turns around and looks at you. You're only able to see her profile and she has a hood up. Yes, you, you look like you need something. Speak quickly, child. I know time is of the essence. This is, this is just... Suya. It's Susa, right? No, oh, that's you. No, nope. Susa's not there. It's just you. Come, child. Every elf knows of where we are right now. Surely you've figured it out by now. I, um... You can no. give me uh, an arcana or nature check. Uh, let's see which one's higher. Nature. Seven. <laughs> Excuse Not me rolling. while I go punch the internet. <laughs> Ever. Not rolling, rolling well tonight, to are we? In the cinematic scene, you gotta help me out, please. <laughs> Not this is rolling karma. well tonight. You're constantly calling are me my right. child. This You're is just not rolling oh. for me here. I, I think maybe I do the physical Oopsie dice. Do. <laughs> Oopsie do. <laughs> no, it's fine. You, 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 look, you look at her and she sees that your face is still clearly puzzled. <laughs> and she just... Bob <sighs> smacked. And she goes, child, clearly we are in the fae. Is this not where your race came from? Uh, y- yes, but I, I how, I, how how did how did I get here? I'm I'm trying to help my friend. If you can call him that. Portals to the Fey exist everywhere, even in the blood steps, as forsaken as it is. Come, come, you must quickly choose. Okay, what if, what am I She gestures to the several varieties of plants in front of her. All of these will save your friend. All all of them? All, but some are more helpful than others. Some will have lingering effects. Some will empower, some will weaken. Any chance one of them will give him purple polka dots? I mean, she looks um, at she looks him down the row. Mm, not quite that. Well, so I I can just I can I can go pick one. Anyone you'd like. But That's remember, this is no catch. Well, the catch is in that. What has happened to your friend? There's no way to make him 100% whole the way he was before. The injury he sustained is one of Titan. He will be forever marked and he will forever bear some injury from this. Another thing for him to brag about. I mean, um, 
Uh, okay, okay, uh, but, but what do you want from me? This stuff doesn't work without some sort of trade. I know that. The, what you'll, what you'll have to live with is the knowing that if you chose wrong, you're the one who made the choice. And that's all I need. Oh. Choose wisely. And she kind of just stands up, doesn't get full, like she's not, she has a little bit of a hunchback and you see as she turns and faces you, it's the same woman you saw out on the plains of the blood steps, the hooked nose, the sunken in eyes, the pure black pupils. And she just kind of slowly just turns into the soil and melds away. I didn't get her name. Uh, um, okay. Plants, 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 plants. Oh, plants. One of you, please speak to me somehow. I, I can't, I can't pick wrong. I can't pick wrong. I hate picking things. <sighs> okay, so, um, out of character, how would you like me to go about this? However you want. If you want me to describe several of them, I can. If you just want to leave it to random chance, you can. You pick one. That you is look how at, this you, happens. You, you look <laughs> at all of these plants, not a single one looks familiar. These are clearly all fey wild specific species of plant. None of these are native to the material plane. No, no pressure. Um, just taste one a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you could do that. I would. I will let you know as a friendly DM. I don't recommend doing that. But you can if you want. Just chew on some petals and see what happens. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Dwayne threw me off with the rat thing. Because my rats, when I give them treats, they do that. And they go, hey, hey, like that. <laughs> Well, now I know where I came from. Uh, one, I'll just, I'll just, I'll let you think about it. And I'll just describe plants until I run out of ideas for plants. Uh, one is like, uh, it's, 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 you miss it, but you can tell that it's separate from any of the other ones because it's just so small. It is barely two inches in diameter. Has waxy light green leaves, and uh, it has tiny blue and white flowers growing on the tips of the leaves. Um, almost looks like little spider legs. Um, one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, one is like one of the one of the options is just this giant redwood that's like a hundred feet tall, and you can you see a small tool at the base of it that's meant to peel off some of the bark. Um, Sturdiness, maybe. One is. Uh, it just kind of like the same like lattice work you used to grow like tomatoes and grapes and other vine, other vine like plants on. This one has um, uh, gold spade shaped leaves growing in fan like clusters all over the lattice work. Um, Don't get distracted. Still dead. What else? Uh, one is silvery gray. Um, and just the way it's gr- the way it grows just is haphazard. It doesn't make any sense. It like twists back on itself. So, like some of the root has like grown up to the top, and it strangles some of the leaves. And the leaves grow down into the dirt and spread out like roots. Um, it's just completely upside down, topsy turvy. Um, there's a small section of like there's a small section of. Uh, Fungi, where there's several different mushrooms growing from, you know, that range from just like a small little button mushroom um, that drips this like uh, shiny black liquid um, to uh, one that's uh, just looks like a normal white, white, white cap mushroom. There's one that has turquoise gills and uh, magenta like uh, spores growing on the top. 
There's mushrooms that grow as big as bushes. There's some mushrooms that are just an inch tall, but are a vibrant purple with pink uh, hues running through them. Um, there are, there's a small like um, bush that has these almond star shaped leaves growing on it that have fruits growing off it that look almost like bell peppers. There's um, uh, like a bed of like where you'd grow like um, uh, like root vegetables that have the, that coming out of the ground are these these large purplish flowers with a yellow red center. Um, there's yeah, there's just like literally anything you can think of. look for something that if it looks like the plant is damaged, like it has regrown a lot better than the other plants and looks sturdy but also flexible. Okay. Give me a uh, nature check. I'm gonna, I'm gonna physically roll that. Okay. I'm gonna use my giant metal die. <laughs> that clank. Thirteen. Right. Thirteen total. Plus, uh, plus uh, my. That was nature, right? Yes. Was Seventeen metal, total. So. Seventeen total. All right. It's pretty good. Awesome. Uh, with a 17. Let's see just how fuck Steve is. Also, all of you, I, I see what you're doing. Telling me to grab multiple plants, uh, piss off the fairies. Uh -huh. That's a bad idea. Grab them all. <laughs> grab them all. Just a big old Listen, hand. They grant superpowers. I just do it. under the whole punching the lady to take them all. I didn't say take them all. I just said to punch the lady. Like, I was under that camp there. Because Prahana likes violence, okay? Obviously. Obviously, this is Alchemy 101, so just throw them all in, see what happens. I mean, it worked in Skyrim. Hmm. Did it? Yeah, but this is, like, my life. So can we, like, not do those things? Oh, interesting. Hold on, I'm picking Ooh. from a I'm picking from my from a guide I have here, like I'm my afraid. personal guide that I use. Yes, I have a guide of mystical fruits and vegetables and flowers. This is the nice. guide to poisoning Steve. I yeah. too am a mystical fruit. Your you plans have come to fruition. But I know where he started this goddamn document, and it was in fact the Poison Steve game. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, just out of out of. Uh, revenge for you keep calling them child and and, and, and keep calling them a horn style elf instead of a broad reach elf. I really should have grabbed the spider leg plant and the mushrooms. See, that would have just been me. You never know. He he would have sprouted spider legs and shot out spores. <laughs> so yes. you you kind of you just start walking down the line of all these plants. You're just like, no, 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 no. And you actually get to a section of like plants that are supposed to be grown underwater that are all in tanks and you find one excuse me at you bless you excuse me bless you. <laughs> excuse me uh, you find one that uh, it's calls to you and you actually you see that what you like that just looks like normal like coral but at, you realize that the harvesting, what you're supposed to harvest, is this almost microorganism that grows on it. And you scrape a bunch of it off, you put it into a bottle with a little bit of the water in that tank, and as soon as you stopper the bottle, you are immediately, it's almost like you're falling backwards, but you never hit the ground. And then you go from falling backwards to falling forwards, and you're Stop and Susa's right next to you. Susa, 
You blinked, Yine was gone. You blinked again, Yine's back. Don't do drugs, kids. I rub my eyes. Are we allowed to disagree with that last statement from... <laughs> you, uh, I have a character where, that would disagree. Where, 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 where did you go? Is that, I'll tell you later. Let's go. I have this. This is a bottle full of, 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 uh, stuff. And we have to go. Now. Okay. Take uh, Susa, Susa, you smell just... If you could somehow smell every flower at once, but be able to also identify each of those individual flowers with that smell, it just kind of overwhelms you. It's just like this moment of, like when you step into a Yankee candle store, but instead oh, of just being like, no. Oh, but no, oh. no, but instead of it being that one smell that just like smells like everything and just like gives you that instant headache, it's you smell it all smell. at once, I but, it also, so many smells. <laughs> but it's also all individual at once. Wait, but, uh, but how does a how does a snake person do smell things? They might be snake people, but they can still smell. My tongue, yeah, my tongue. Well, I want they you also to. have they have regular have regular noses too. Uh, but yes, <laughs> Yune, you run back over to the uh, Malthoon. At this point, it is unnaturally calm, but there is a small trickle of like this greenish brown liquid just coming out from the corner of his mouth. That's the uh, the wound the wound uh, that formed from this stuff falling on him has just kind of it doesn't sizzle anymore it still smells awful and the corners are just rapidly decomposing you have this bottle of stuff I I administer the bottle of stuff. I was going to say, you pocket it and move on. <laughs> <laughs> how, do, how do you administer it? Would you like to administer it to the wound? Or would you like to make him drink it? Or what would you like to do? I would like to roll and see how that <laughs> works best. All right, give me a medicine check. I oh, oh if you want to put your head together with someone else, you can. Hell yeah, chaos. No, I, no roll, roll is much better. I you know. have a three in medicine. I had an idea, but it would take me an hour to do it, and I don't think he has that long. Yeah, you get the sense of uh, immediacy with this. So, are you holding this bottle out so that we can this vial of plant juice out so that we can all see? Yes. Gar, yeah, you know how to fix people that are broken and dying? Yeah, Yene walked into the woods and came back with a vial of, like, some weird, like, algae-looking thing and a bottle of water. That so, clearly did not come from that, like, thicket of trees. <laughs> Gar, help me fix some more. How do I, is, how do I? Is that going to be useful? Yes. A thousand times yes. Uh, I just don't know how, but I know it is. Trust me. Uh, I grab it from her, or from them, and... I pour some of it onto a cloth that I lay on the wound, and then I shove the rest of it in his mouth. Okay. Is he conscious? Roll no, for that, you he turkey. is in a coma. Uh, he's not going to swallow it, then. Oh, he's going to just get the head tilt, and it's just going to have to go rub, down. And it rub the throat, clamp, clamp the mouth, just kind of gotcha. And it okay. might go into his lungs. <laughs> A little bit of aspiration never hurt anybody. Yes, yeah, so you do that. Aspiration? Really? Uh, so you do that. A Malthoon. Yes. Don't worry, it's regenerative. Yes. You had kind of... It was one of those things where one moment, like, you're sitting there as your seat, frightened, not, not sure, you know, if you might have to fight to the death to get this Titan spawn away from you, to, you know, elation that... These things are just flying away to sudden pain, agony, and then nothingness. Your dreams are of Dren, uh, of Drendali. You think of your home. You think of the people there you left behind. You think of the 
war that goes on between you and the dwarves. You think of how that is so minor and insignificant compared to the thousands that suffer daily in the name of their gods. It's a lot. Until, fu- until finally, there's... You feel sensations again. You can smell the slight, you know, nastiness of the blood steps. You can feel the breeze across. You Wait, can. Am I like in a place or am I in like nothingness? You're like in your dreams. In the dreams, back in the. Yeah. Okay, got it, got it. But you're starting to come to, and you're starting to realize, and you're starting to realize this yourself. But then, as you feel, you can start to feel your own body, you start to feel the pain of the wound. You sense something in your throat, and you involuntarily swallow. And you feel empty, but a burning desire. You feel good, better than you've ever felt, really. Feels like there's always been something missing and now you have it. You feel complete, you feel whole. You feel powerful. You feel and you go to flex your fingers and all of you see Malthoon's fingers flex. You sit up, you see Malfoon struggle a little bit, but he's able to get into a sitting position. Uh, Malfoon, there's no pain. You feel fine. There's, but all, already that feeling of perfection, that feeling of satisfa- satisfaction, that feeling of feeling whole is already fading. But you want it back. You'll do anything to get it back or even to get a modicum of what you felt. Uh, say no. There is a burning, driving desire in you now. Interesting. And you must list in your flaws. I look to feel whole. I will drive myself to find the proper ingredients to feel whole. Okay. Or you could just put addict. Sure. <laughs> yeah. If you don't want to be dramatic about it, Dwayne. Plant juice addict. Plant juice addict. That fairy weed, though. <laughs> As you, as you, you're, you're kind of in that, you, know, you just sat up and you go to stand up. Everyone, all of you are just kind of shocked that he went from fine to comatose to fine again mm-hmm. in this span of 10 minutes. After, as you, as you stand up and they kind of like offer you a hand and you look past them into that small little gathering of trees. And there is an old woman, hooded, hunchbacked, hooked nose, dark eyes, You can see that she's clearly laughing, and then she just steps into the shadows of the trees. So after all of that, I'll kind of like, I have that moment, I still have that burning thing, I kind of just like, I have a hundred, those hundred questions rush through my head, and before I go to start, I didn't witness. Oh, thank Natriel, you're still alive. Hmm. Don't believe that. Whatever that. Save, save your praises to Madriel. She had nothing to do with this. Besides, okay, fine. thank you, nay. They're the one that got you this plant juice. It was you, nay. Oh, yes, it, it was me. Well, thank and, you, and, yes. And, and Susa. I, I didn't do anything. I, I tried to help, but I lost. Sight? You know, 
let's not dwell on a situation such as this one that um, unsavory. Perhaps we should just press on. I feel fine. You feel okay. Oh he yes. Died. I immediately start checking him for all the places where the wounds were. Uh, excuse okay. me, Gar, regardless I... of if he wants my help. Gar, I'm <laughs> sorry. I this is my personal space, and I would appreciate it if you would not lay on hands. Just because you feel fine doesn't mean there might not be wounds still. Now hold still. I am neither bleeding nor weeping. Do you allow him to examine? Do you allow him to examine you, Malcolm? Like begrudgingly, but I mean, just to kind of yeah, okay. I'm gonna fight him. Uh, you're able to see uh, that the the wound area, it's not 100 percent healed. There's definitely gonna be a nasty scar there, um, but it does not look like it did before, which was clearly a death blow. Um, you know, you kind of look at his eyes. The liquid that was coming out the corners of his mouth is dried up and. You know, crusted, but there's no fresh liquid coming out. Um, yeah, nothing. Right. You, you have this terrible taste in your mouth, just like awful. But he looks fine. Does anyone happen to be Good. carrying any wine with them? No, no. I have no water. At all, sadly. Gar, you are. You are dry. Footsteps. You really think I still carried around enough alcohol with me to take this entire trip? Yes. yes Will you take me for a drunk? <laughs> Getting the impression that answering that question would put a damper on the day, so perhaps we should just press forward. Wait, wait, that would put a damper on the day. Not you just dying, almost. Why are we still on that subject? Let us move on, please. Because you just got covered in slobber that no. burn through your skull. Yes, yes, yes. If, if the we've elf all... says he's fine, he's fine. Tana gets it. We've all been hit with an acid splash once or twice. Not like that. I punch him in you the arm and lived. tell him... <laughs> Ow, my I skin. I punch the mouth soon in the arm and tell him, don't do that again. Yes, Please. next time we view our two titan spawns waging never-ending war, I'll be sure to not get sprayed by their entrails. Good, good, you... now you understand. Yes. You feel okay. Avoid the entrails. You're, you're okay. So, so thank you so much for your concern. Are, are you okay? I am perfectly fine. It appears as though the ch- Yanai was able to pull through, and for that I'm appreciative. Susa takes mental note of that. <laughs> Prahana also takes mental note of that. Character development! Are you... When, when you... Did you, did you see anything? When you were, you, you know, almost... Almost... Dead. Do you want to know what's on the other side? Yes. Hmm. Only one way to find out. And I'm just gonna start oh, walking okay. on. <laughs> and I'm just gonna start walking, like I'm done with this conversation, so... <laughs> Alright. I was expecting him to shank your head. No. You want to, there's only one way to find out. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> all right. So you continue on. Uh, and you all kind of do that thing where, like, you know, you're still worried about Lamalthoon, but you're not going to damage his pride any further by fawning over him. Because you know he wouldn't like that. But you all do that thing where you just kind of look at him in the corner of your eye as you guys are walking, like, okay, is he like walking with a limp? Is he fine? He's like, if it wasn't for the fact that he doesn't know where to go, he's like up in the front of the pack and he's walking with this just really renewed, fortified, vigored pace. Um, you know, uh, by the way, nothing. if you had any injuries or any exhaustion or anything like that, you were 100% all the way up, even like before the fight. Okay. Um, yeah, so you were, you know, all your spell slots are back. Like anything, anything that was away from you Ooh. is back. Yes. <clears throat> 
rat. Uh, like, yeah, Gar's not, yeah, any Gar's abilities not doing whatever. the... Gar's not doing the looking at him like he's worried after that because he checked him. He sees that he's physically fine. He's not actually triple checking him as he walks because of that. Because after doing that once over, Gar's like, okay. He's okay. not... He's not dead. I'm good with this. Drahana never cared. She has no opinion either way. Sorry, Steve. I care, but Drahana doesn't. That's fine. That's a valid position to take. Uh, okay. And then I messaged you. <clears throat> uh, alright, perfect. So, uh, you guys uh, travel for a couple more uh, hours until uh, Yune gives that kind of universal, like, hold uh, symbol. And you all kind of crouch down on this uh, small crest that uh, looks down and you see a cave. It's nondescript. There's no markings, no signs, no people, but Terhana and Yune kind of just look at each other and they nod their heads and they agree that this is the cave that you've been looking for. Up time. Susa yawns and says, we should go now. Have you ever seen a snake yawn? It's the cutest thing. <laughs> Sorry. I have. Because re remember, she is still exhausted. <laughs> uh, I feel Susa. as though we should press on. I would like to do an observation or survival to check to see... Like, if I notice anything particular about the mouth of the entrance, like if there's any traps or anything like that before we go further in. Sure. Give me a perception check. Perception. Oh, oh my goodness. I just accidentally clicked that on my thing. Give me one second. Come on. I got a 14. Yeah. Uh, with a 14 from from where you guys are right now, Caitlin, don't, you don't really notice that there are any obvious traps. Excuse me. Okie dokie. Then I feel it is safe to move on. Okay. Should we... Should we be ready for something? Oh. Yes, can he... I... I would like to go in with stealth. Or is it too late for that, Patty? Well, I mean, you guys are still kind of back on this, like, little ridge. Um, so, I mean, if you guys want to approach it with stealth, you can. It's up to you. Okay. Uh, Tarhana looks to the group. Um, I... I don't feel that there's any traps on the outside. Of this cave. However, I do feel it be wise to be as quiet as possible. We don't know what could be waiting. Well, this is tactical Gar sense. Just, I agree with the scouting Gar just party. Looks, Fair so enough. Gar just looks down at his armor and says, so, uh, I'll stay here. That'll probably be best, Scar. Okay. All right, so who's who's all going forward? I will sneaky sneak. Okay. I will also attempt the sneaky sneak. Susa and Malcolm, you going as well? Uh, you know what? You keep asking me, and I'll go. <laughs> all right. Malfin? I would not leave Gar by himself, even though I can sneak. I'll leave. Right. I'll leave Brillo behind. Okay. So okay. The three. That's of you... not a bad idea. Oh, damn it! God, we were doing so nope. well. Nope. Three of you give me stealth checks. <laughs> and the uh, DC just went up by five. 
Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm at disadvantage already. Yeah. Uh, oh, you are? For yeah, the, he's... Until, Susan's I, all tired, like... <laughs> until I take a sleep right. sleep. <laughs> Is Susan, maybe you should stay behind? Nope. No, yes, it means it's, 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 Su- <laughs> Susan has no outward appearance of being less stealthy. She's just, t- she's a little tired. Oh, oh too bad. Man. I rolled that nice 20. Hey, 15's uh, not bad, though. Not bad. Is she slithering a little slower really than good. usual? No, speed's not affected. Okay, let me give this virtual roller one last try. She's she's yawning a little bit more than she usually does, but other than that, there's some big bags underneath her eyes. Rewarded. All right, so we got an 18, a 15, a 24. Not bad. That's uh, pretty strong. So as a group, uh, you are pretty stealthy, um, able to move forward. And then right as you get about a foot away from entering the cave, this just pearlescent, iridescent, shimmering field appears that you can clearly see um, that was not there before and just almost forms a perfect uh, bubble-like covering on the cave entrance. That's fine. That's not scary at all. Um... Are we going to be trapped? Perhaps if we follow further in, we'll find the solution to removing this. Well, is it, is it behind us or is it on the outside of the cave, like a bar- barring so you, us from you, getting yes. in? Correct. Yes. You haven't quite entered the cave yet. This is, this would be, this, so then this appeared right before you were about to enter the cave. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, obviously it is of a magic nature, but I'll still take the the time to cast Detect Magic as a ritual to find out a little bit more about it. Okay. Uh, so that'll take 10 minutes. Uh, Yune, Trahana, is there anything you going to do in those 10 minutes? I want to poke it. Okay. You touch, you touch it, and it's just this... Um, it's this weird kind of buffer where like it's like semi... Like the first, like like about an inch before you would touch where it is, it's kind of this weird, like you meet resistance and then you finally able to put your hand against it and it feels like solid, almost like gl- like a glass substance. And you kind of like, you know, knock and like punch on it, punch at it experimentally, but it's much tougher than glass. It's, ob- it's obviously not actually glass. So- but it, it does not hurt you when you touch it or anything like that. Okay. You're, well, you're gonna say something, Inay? Uh, I I would like to use my um, abilities as like a, a tracker to observe for any particular tool marks or leftover magic items that might have created this wall okay. thing. That would be more of an arcana check. It's not my best, but can I try it anyway? Absolutely. Yeah. Look for look for other tracks. Yeah, yeah, that's that's another thing is like like tracks. That's pretty much what I meant by tracking. But Okay, I mean yeah, if you want to see if there's been recent passage through here, yeah, that would be more of a survival check then. Roll a seventeen or arcana. Okay. And then a twenty two for survival. Uh with the seventeen arcana. You realize that this was uh, a magic that was cast by whoever occupies this cave. This is obviously a defensive sort of uh, magic. Um, and it's just meant as like basically an impenetrable, like a unbreakable door, basically. Like it's an arcane version of a door, essentially. Like it's not designed to hurt or to deter. It's just a magic door essentially. Uh, with the 22 survival, uh, you can see that there are some you know, footprints here, um, and you can actually see what looks to be uh, a set of footprints, a marking that looks like somebody's been dragged, and another set of footprints next to that. 
So it looks like two people had a person they were dragging between them that leads into the cave. I relay this to the stealthy friends stealthing with me. Okay. Uh, ten minutes goes on, Susa. Since you're all stealthing, what cool mm. hand signals do you use to relay this information? Uh, part of the, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that part of the check uh, for the, the <laughs> that you got, Yune, was that not only is this like a um, like a door, like a magic door, but also prevents sound or anything really from coming in or out of it. So you realize that you can talk, that you would be able to talk to one another. Oh. It'd be fine. Sweet. Also, I do have thieves can't. So okay, well, for thieves, Yune and Trahana can communicate. Do, do you tell me way back where with the Malthoon? Hey, you guys can come up. It doesn't need to be quiet. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Okay. So the whole party is together now. Uh, your ten minutes go off, Susa, and your detect magic uh, ritual is finished. Uh, and you can see that this uh, like the the magic is just related to just where the door is. Um, the type of magic is evocation magic. Um, yeah, and that's what the tech magic is. Yeah. Well, once uh, <clears throat> knowing that my two companions that I'm with now probably do not have the means to get rid of this door, once Lamalthun gets up. I'll say, uh, Lamalthun, do you have the ability to dispel this door, or do you have a magic key, perhaps? Oh, jeez. Detect. I detect. I don't think I have dispel yet. Well, uh, probably not. That's a third level spell. A third level spell, yeah. Um, I kind of walk up and I'm like, well, I cannot dispel this. I need to see. Um, have we not been able to our, just do arcane knowledge checks to see how to get past this? Uh, the arcane check so far was just to kind of find out more about it. It was found out that, you know, this is a door, prevents sound or light or anything like that from going through either way. Um, not harmful, doesn't hurt you. Um, it's evocation magic. It's contained to just the door. Okay. Then, as a wizard, uh, with a little bit more arcane knowledge, can I attempt an arcane to specifically see if there is, you know, a type of counter trigger to something like this? Sure. I mean, our Connor roll. That is a 23. 23. Uh, plus. Oh, plus. Oh, yes. Uh, okay. Yep. Uh, so you look at that and you're like, okay, so obviously whoever is residing here is not wasting some of their more powerful magic daily mm -hmm. to cast the magic to make this door. Right. So okay. there's clearly a source that is causing this door to appear. Um, so you can either try to attempt to identify, you know, you, you'd have to figure out, you know, where the source is coming from, um, or you could figure out a way to disrupt the casting of that, um, as this would have to be a continuously cast thing to make sure, you know, it's, so always is, up, always so, happening. So this is a concentration spell, essentially. Yes. Um, okay. That obviously, it's not being concentrated on by a person. Okay. Would that twenty? Yeah. Yes. Do I see the source? Can I? Can I run? Okay. I guess I look and I see. Can I just kind of like track any runes around the edges of the door? Like, is there a? 
you know, is this a rune thing? Is this a ritual thing where they drew something like in the archway? Um, is it uh, sure, Yeah. Uh, so you can actually, you, so you focus a little bit longer. Um, and with Seuss's detect magic helping, um, as the thing is not magical itself, or it's the one causing the magic, there's actually just a small rock that looks unnaturally rock-like, like too too rock-like. It's a little too rock. Um, and you pick it up, and uh, is it, it on actually our side a lot. Of the door? Yes. Oh. It's a lot. It's a lot lighter than you think it would be. And you see, like you kind of rub it a little bit, and <laughs> and it's actually a uh, purplish focusing crystal. that would have magic imbued within it. As I get it closer to the field, does it like, if I push it closer, does it start to open? No, you actually just kind of look at it and just go and crush it in your hands. And the the magical door just shimmers a little bit and then dissipates. I'm going to say, I just just right out of the freaking cave. (laughs) <laughs> no, you just you, yeah, you pick it up, you look at it, you brush it off, see if the crystal, and you're like, huh? Yep, yep I know how this. You just kind of let the dust fall from your hands. I believe I have solved the door problem. I knew you would. More faith, Susie. Your confidence okay, is inspiring. Nobody has ever told me that before. I gave you compliments, just not fancy ones. Yeah, but that one was fancy. And your and your and your inspirations are in fact concise. With this door now gone, our voices would carry more. So back to the sneaking. Susa will turn around to Brillo and tell him to move very, very slowly. Bah! (laughs) That's that's too lifelike. (laughs) <laughs> He's gonna be like, oh, I'm sorry, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, our poor mics tonight. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so what you guys doing? Everyone together? Yes, Tarhana wants to continue moving forward. Does anyone not have the ability to see? I can't see in that the dark. That would be car. I'm human. It's okay. There are torches along the walls. Oh. It is it is at least dimly lit. Some places brightly lit. It's okay, Susa. I can I can see in this light. Okay. I'm just trying to help out. Uh. Uh, what's the uh, marching you. order of your? What's the marching order of you guys? I personally think we should have a sneaky person in front and a sneaky person in back and a sneaky person in the middle. Okay. And the heavy clunking person. In between. Do you clunk? I have disadvantage on stealth rolls. It's more like a clink. Yeah, with his armor, it's mm-hmm. pretty pretty clinky clink. I I clink. I'm a clinky clack instead of a clinky clack. <laughs> um, I think Yane would be good in the back, uh, just because they are a uh, long range, in terms of fighting. I think. Okay. And, so we got more, uh, uh, and Trahan is more like sneaky and then punch you in the face type. So Trahan is. That's just me. Okay, Trahan is leading. I, I do bring up the rear quite nicely. Uh, so who's you know, how are the other three of you organized between them? I should probably 
probably be up near the front. Okay, so you're second. I have very high style, so if you want me in the dead center, I can do that. Sure, Okay, Lamalfoon, then Susa, and Brillo, and then... Brillo's here. gonna be... But yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll put Brillo behind me. I was gonna kind of say Did that Brillo's, say... like, walking along you, basically. Yeah. No, keep it to yourself. Eh. <laughs> nope, you got cut off. I'm, cut, I'm permanently cutting you off. At least He's for this one. Nope, because I caught you. you. I know. Damn it. It's like swipe or no swiping. I got you. You do can't not, swipe. Do not be the bad guy. Oh, no. Nope. Swipe or no swiping. I'm a raging pun sexual. You can't stop it. <laughs> if I say it three times real fast, I can. Okay. So that I I have the current marching order with your tokens on the board. That's what we're going with, unless someone else specifies different going forward. <clears throat> so moving along, Terhana, give me a perception check. Terhana sees all. Terhana knows all. Terhana has a fifteen. Fifteen. Sure. Okay. Uh, and with your 15, you actually do see, not all, but you see a small tripwire that runs along the ground in between, perfectly in the middle of two torches in the darkest part of the cave. Um, but your trained, experienced eye is able to see an obvious hunter's trap. And you warn the group of this tripwire. And you watch where it goes, and you see that it actually, you look up, and what we what you thought was um, smooth smooth cavern wall, uh, there's actually the shape is it breaks and doesn't conform neatly. It's actually a bundle of rocks that would have fallen away and fallen on your group as you would trip that tripwire. So good job. Uh, you continue moving along for another like uh, twenty minutes or so, uh, moving through this cave, but just kind of yes. I was going to say, are there any, like, I mean, we're in a cave. I'm sure there's, like, you know, small stones on the ground. Yeah. Okay. I pick one up. Okay. Okay. You can write one rock from the cultist cave in your inventory. Uh, keep moving along. This it, it's it, it, there's, there's, like, really no branching paths. It's just a straight shot. And, just, and it has, you know, small little lines in it, but it mainly just... It's a straight shot. Um, plenty of torches to light the way. Um, every now and then there's a reinforcing uh, arch to make sure it doesn't collapse. Um, give me another perception check, Trahan. I'm Seven. using my vote. I'm using my vote from last week. Okay. Sixteen. Sixteen. So not quite enough. Uh, you, t you take a step, and what was loosely covered with some dust uh, on the ground, so that you couldn't see the etching of an arcane glyph into the ground. It pulses and glows bright, and then nothing happens. Can I? Demo you kind of like brace yourself, like ready for like you know a terrible fireball or some ice to wash over you or a lightning bolt to zap you, but nothing happens. Can I identify what that was before it fades away? You can try it there, can't check. Please. Oof. Nope. Seven? Uh, seven. Uh, not quite sure. You weren't able to get enough close enough because it fades immediately after glowing. Okay. Um, and with... You know, one, two, with two bigger people in front of you being Gar and Terhana, kind of like sure. looking around, like, what the fuck is that? And being not able to really see around them, and the uh, the arcane glyph fades away. Okay, everybody, obviously that was some, so I don't know exactly what that was, but it was some sort of warning device, not meant to harm, but inform. We have, to go, in, to, we have to go under the presumption that they know we're here now. Uh, guard decides to uh, use his divine sense once and see if uh, he see notices that there's any undead fiends, uh, celestial types, uh, within 60 feet. In 60 feet? No. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Susa, Susa will look at the rock that she had. You see her with her with her little thieves tool. She draws what, if existed in this world, would be a cauliflower on it. Okay. And then she just goes, Aww. And it starts to glow for a second, and then it goes dim. And it looks just like a normal rock for the time being. Oh. Uh, right as you finish, and you all kind of, you know, see Susan just kind of whisper to the rock and then put it in her pocket, and she just looks at you guys like, what? Uh, to that moment, you hear... You hear the sound of footsteps running towards you. And coming around the corner, you see several hooded figures, some with blades drawn, some with sleeves rolled back, and, ma- and arcane magic swirling about them as they prepare to cast spells. And they all have the same black hoods up, and they all wear the same symbol. The symbol of Morbo. And that's where we'll take our break. Right before our friends are about to get into some combat here. A little early, but I figured I didn't want to start combat and then have to take our break. I cast cast disbelief. Uh, Well, you're not a caster, so no. Uh, So yes. I I cast summon a wild John. Mm, No, not yet. Damn. Damn. (laughs) Damn. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's 1024. We'll take a 10 minute break. So we'll see you at 1034 Eastern Standard Time. 10 minutes. Don't go anywhere. Or do, but be back in 10 minutes. Hey. I live.
Welcome back to Skarn. Our adventurers have traveled and found the cave of the cultists of Mormo that they were told about by Belsimer. And they have made it through, finding a way past the arcane magical door, past one trap, but triggering the second, bringing the welcome party of cultists. And now they must do battle. Everyone roll that magical, magical initiative. Patty, just so you know, Brillo goes on my turn. Okay, sounds good. And props to Don Arnetto for contributing to the Great Old One. My god, Hell why yeah. have my initiative rolls been so horrible this game? I don't know. Y'all ready for some... Y'all ready for some initiative? Let's take a look. What do I get? I have initiated. Oh! Oh, wait, no, that's not right. That literally can't be what my initiative is. A one plus four? That's not what my initiative is. So it's If you only... like this badass Nordic battle music they're about to fight to, check out Vince Fep on YouTube. I cannot recommend them enough. They have so the good. most badass music ever. So good. Um, I will post the link in chat. Yeah. So, Patty, it's not yes. actually calculating my initiative. Oh, no. Uh, what's, what's your initiative modifier? Seven. Seven? Hmm. Yes. Oh, do you, <clears throat> do you have, like, a, a feat or something? Or I do not. Your class? I have something from my class. Oh. You need oh, to change uh, your initiative modifier. I did. So I added the plus intelligence um, to the Okay, so that plus plus your special thing that I told you about. What's, what's your, your total number be? Uh, I can edit it. Ten. Okay. So it's still rolling that one on initiative. But he's got a ten. Not bad. Uh... Let me just, uh... Yes, for those who are curious, School of War Magic. Starting at second level, your keen ability to assess tactical situations allows you to act quickly in battle, unless you roll a nat 1. You can give yourself a bonus to your initiative rolls equal to your intelligence modifier, which for me is a plus 3. Okay. Those guys, that's caught. Those guys. That's a 17. And that guy. Okay. Uh, so coming around the corner are five bandits, or not bandits, <laughs> cultists. They all wear your stereotypical heavy black robe uh, emblazoned with the symbol of Mormo. Uh, some of them pull uh, daggers. Um, some of them have their, uh, uh, some of them pull scimitars. Some of them just have their sleeves rolled back prepared to cast magic. Um, and there seems to be one that's directing the other four on uh, where to go and who to attack. Uh, but we'll start with Yane. They are about uh, 40 feet away from you guys. Hmm, let me see. Shall my bow reach that far? Oh, yes. Yes, then I shall distance Stebby. All right. Really? Ooh. Really? A nine is not gonna hit the cultists, unfortunately. What have I done to anger you, gods of dice? <clears throat> so, uh, Yune pulls back uh, her short bow, uh, lines up the shot, fires, and uh, their arrow goes just a little wide. Not used to kind of this indoor fighting with the narrow tunnels, and you know, uh, you're, you're also in the back, so you don't wanna hit your friends in front of you. So you kind of That's take this weird angle and you fire 
and uh, you know, you don't hit any of your friends, but you also uh, are you you, are, you go wide of your intended target. Uh, bonus action or movement? I get a wee bit closer. Okay. Terhana, your turn. Uh, with you being at the front, these uh, cultists are about 30 feet away from you. Okay, hold on. I gotta get my little miniature panther off my lap. Okay. Uh, Alright, so bonus action. Uh, I rage. Okay. And running on all fours gives me a speed of 40 feet. Okay. So I will get right up to the closest one. And... So you're so you're actually only 30 feet away. Um, um, since, but... Yeah, because your okay. name is at the back of the group and you're at the front of the group. Uh, so you'd only be about 30 feet away from them. Okay, so then I will not run on all fours. Um, but I will run up to the closest one. And... Okay. Attack. Alrighty. Uh, 17 will hit the cultist. Okay. Um, you do see kind of at, with their movements, you do see uh, uh, what looks like to be just the bare bones of leather armor they have strapped to their chest. Um, but it doesn't seem like protection is a top priority here. Alright, it's going to do nine slashing. Nine slashing damage. Oh, wait, wouldn't it be more? I forgot. I'm raging, so it's a plus two. So that would be 11, actually. 11 slashing damage. Uh, then yes. And that is actually enough to uh, fell that cultist as he just goes down in a withering pile and you see him just clutching at his chest and just his hands come away crimson. But he has just this horrible, maniacal smile on his face. I go to meet Marmo. <laughs> and he just falls down dead. Nice. Uh, anything else in your turn? Nope, that'll be it. Okay. <laughs> I even named them Bandit. That's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> wait, no. What are these guys doing in here? Go away. They shouldn't be in here. Uh, okay. It's me. Two of the cultists are going to. Uh, They're going to rush forward, both with scimitars. Uh, they're going to try to hack at you, Serhana, as you are the closest target to them. Does a 22 hit? Uh, let's see. Double checking to see. Um, it does hit, um, but let's see. I'm resistant to budgling. Fun budgeting. Uh, piercing, slashing, and bludgeoning. Okay. Uh, and then how about a 19? Does that hit you? It still hits, yes. Okay. So they both hit you, uh, but you'll take half of each of these damages. Uh, so the first one hits you for two, so one slashing damage. And the second one hits you for six, so three slashing damage. As. Uh, their scimitars find purchase on you, but even though they cut and they make a nice, decent kind of cut, one across your chest, one up your forearm, you just kind of watch the blood ooze out of your arms and just flex your muscles even more. And you just shake your head at them. Fools. Uh, okay. That's their turn. Uh, the one in the back seems to be guiding everyone. Uh does not like um, the fact that it just saw his two underlings slash at Uther Hunter, and it looks like all the all, all they did was, you know, like the bite of a flea. Uh, so he's going to cast a spell on you. Uh, give me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, okay. Wisdom saving throw. Gonna go ahead and roll that. Got a 14 on it. Uh, that is just your wisdom score. Oh, so I did not click it correctly. Just kidding. 
I was testing you. You passed. Great job, Patty. Thank you. <laughs> well, look at that. Same number <laughs> anyway. It worked out. Uh, 14. Uh, that does save. So you feel momentarily as almost all the muscles in your body, you just, you know, flex them to, you know, shake off the damage of the sword. But you feel as like you go, you go to release the flex, which you, it feels like you didn't. They just feel like they're going to seize up even more and more. And you almost feel like you can't move your body, but you just uh, through your battle rage and your one mindedness on bloodlust, uh, you're unaffected by the spell and you are not a uh, whole person. Uh, but uh, as a bonus action, uh, the uh, cult fanatic will cast spiritual weapon uh, and appearing uh, and appearing next to you, Trihana, is this large uh, uh, spear that's as big as you, made out of this blackish green uh, energy that seems to crackle and it pulses and radiates and not not wielded by anyone it just moves arcs and goes to strike at you uh does a 10 hit you it does not it tickles okay so the the arcane weapon just it goes to strike at you and you just are able to use your uh give a great sword right yes you're just able to use your great sword and just kind of push it away from you and does not strike. Uh, okay, that's what it can do on his turn. Lamalfoon. Oh boy. Um, they're still about 40 feet away from me, right? Uh, closer to 35. Closer to 35. Help me out. Is Expeditious Retreat a bonus action or an action? That's a bonus. bonus. That's a bonus. Cool. <laughs> Since I only have 30 feet of movement, the closest one's 35 feet to me, I don't want to waste a turn, so I will cast Expeditious Retreat on myself. But instead of retreating, I dash headlong into combat. Okay. All right, and I go up to stabinate one of the bad okay. guys. All right, stabby stab stab with my rapier of death. Oh, sure. Uh, does oh, a yeah, that... twenty-two hit them? Oh yes, for sure. Okay. That is fifteen damage uh 15 damage yeah that uh you just very quickly one easy blow slide the rapier in between their rib cage you know that you hit the heart and they just fall down dead once again this maniacal smile on this face blood gushing out of his mouth he's choking on it <laughs> I stop. I, I uh, free action to talk, so I want to kind of let him slide off my blade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> want to dickishly just kind of like wipe the blade on him, uh, <clears throat> between between them. Just be like, it appears as though they want us to kill them. Perhaps we should not acquiesce. Okay. Anything else in your turn? Nope. That's my move bonus and action. Gar. Gar is going to happily oblige not murdering them. And uh, how far away is that? Uh, you said it was the leader that was casting a spiritual weapon. Yeah. So it's it's kind of a narrow. Uh, yeah, it's a narrow tunnel. So you wouldn't really be able to get to him without you know taking attacks of opportunity from his. Oh no no! I'm them. not I'm not getting to him at all. I'm going okay. to cast sleep on him and the general vicinity around him. Okay. Uh, roll your d8s to form your hit pool, your hit, your hit point pool of affected hit points to put someone to sleep. Starting with the look guy that looks like he's leaving. Twenty nine. Twenty nine. I rolled well. 
You did roll well, but not well enough. As you cast sleep, it goes off, and you see his eyes get very heavy, and he's about to succumb. He just kind of shakes it off and does not fall asleep. But you learn from powerful. He does have more than 29 hit points. Wow. And I'll use the rest of my action to uh, move closer. Okay. This was the leader specifically. Next. Yes. Ooh. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. Next to the Malthoon. Okay. You guys are kind of shoulder to shoulder squared up on these guys. Susa. So, as her action, she will. See, I don't think I can hit him with acid splash. I think it's too far. Nope, that's sixty feet. Yeah, we'll do an acid splash. We'll we'll spit at the man. Alrighty. Uh, you talking about the leader in the back or one of the one of the mooks in front of him? Uh, we'll go with the the leader in the back. Dex, Alrighty. Dex DC fifteen. Dex, say, say, say. Okay. Ooh, not well, not well. Five. So he takes three acid damage. Three acid damage. All right. Uh, is the other guy five feet next to him by chance? Yeah, there'd be there'd be one of them within five feet of him. Then he needs to make a dex save as well. Patty. Alrighty. I mean, yes. Oh wait, wait, hold on. Can I redeem it? Shoot. I'm gonna need you to say again that there's one standing next to the leader, but someone. Just redeemed Patty the Pirate. So, uh, tell me, tell me, someone standing next to that leader. Yeah, there, there be seeming to be one next to the leader. <laughs> he seems to be true of heart and brave of quest, looking like he's made of the salt air and partakes of the grog. Uh, and he also fails his uh, dex save. He will also take three acid damage. Okay. And <clears throat> as my bonus action, I have to use my bonus action to tell Brillo what to do. Okay. Else Brillo just defends. Okay. So I will say, get him, boy. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and Brillo actually has a speed of 40. Oh shit! <laughs> Holy shit! Okay. Does, does right. he have a nitrous button or something? Like <laughs> you just see this sheep barrel down the hallway. <laughs> you ex ever you see ex a sheep in full like run? They're actually pretty. Well, pretty no. Cool. So that's the thing is you expect the sheep to like start running, but you see Susa innovated and put wheels that pop out and the bottom of its feet. <laughs> what? And so the legs remain perfectly straight and it just zooms forward, <laughs> slightly <laughs> leaning ahead, no, no, going this straight is, forward. This is some like shit at this point. No. Oh my god. Does it, uh, does it chomp down on that baddie? Uh, no, actually it has a, uh, what is it called? It is, was it Force Rend? Oh, sure. With its with its sharpened hooves, yes, force empowered rend. Uh, I don't think a seven hits though. Uh, no, seven does not hit the cultist, unfortunately. So you think that Brillo is acting on its own, but you actually see suits that kind of like, uh, in the air, kind of do almost like an or orchestral movement, and is manipulating Brillo. And uh, Susan does not compensate for Brillo moving at full speed on four wheels. We're still and, getting uh, used to it. Yeah, you know, this first time Brillo's gone into combat. Um, so you see the mechanized leg try to like go up, and like it goes up above its head and like tries to smash down the cultist. But you just see like the like the rock on uh, on the ground just obliterate where the hoof lands instead of the cultist. Uh, okay. That was Brillo, everyone. Brillo. <laughs> Give it up for Brillo. <laughs> Am I right? Uh, okay. Give those cultists a scrub down. Uh, it's these other two cultists' turn. 
Uh, they're going to uh, attempt to attack this ridiculous, scary, not of this world mechanical sheep that makes the weird sounds of gods. Uh, they're gonna stab. They're gonna stab at it with their scimitars. Uh, so, does a twelve hit Brillo? It does not. Does a twenty-two hit Brillo? Yes, it does. Okay, so Brillo will take six slashing damage. And the one that lands on it. All right, uh, and then it is Yanae's turn. Back to the top of the round. Wait, so, okay, so Lamalthun had said that we should not kill them because they seem happy about it. Yeah, but uh, from what you know about Cultists of Mormo, having experienced a lot of Cultists of Mormo, uh, is it that it's not necessary, like, but yes, they're happy, to be killed because they think they're going to be reunited with Mormo. Um, that's just because they believe that. It's not like they think that they're going to become more powerful or anything like that. It's just that they're excited to go meet the Hag Queen, the Mother of Serpents. I do relay this to the party. Um, education that moment. Where Mal- it's that moment where Malthing's like, wait, don't kill them. Maybe it's something nefarious going on. Yune's like, no, 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 no. Kill them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, child, you're wrong. <laughs> Burn. And distance stabby. Are you going to attack a uh, leader guy or uh, one of the mooks in the front? Uh, leader guy. All right. Uh, a 19 does hit the guy in the back. Yes. Five, pier- five piercing. <laughs> five piercing damage. All right. Devin, did Anything you else? touch my computer? <laughs> <laughs> so this time you kind of lean around your friends and are able to, you know, study the shot, take the aim, fire, and it does hit your target. But it's one of those where it like hits them in the shoulder and it, it penetrates the armor and it's be- it's, but it's not lethal. It's just gonna, gonna give him a bruise more than anything. You kind of just gonna, like snap it off and throw it to the ground. Nah, I'm gonna stick where I am and uh, um, yeah, I'm gonna stick where I am. Okay. Uh, Terhana, your turn. So, Terhana is like. Screw the, screw the whole not killing these guys, cause it it, it no I'm just stab. So uh, Trahana's gonna go take a swing at the closest one there. Okay, give me an attack. Twelve to hit. That barely hits one of the cultists. Roll some damage. 11 thir- plus 2 from yep, raging, so 13 slashing damage. Uh, once again, just one clean stroke with the broadsword fells, and uh, that cultist goes down. It goes down hard. <laughs> That's those guys. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Dude. Uh, okay. Uh, anything else, Trahana? Um, nope, nothing else. Just Trahana's just kind of like breathing heavy, kind of like um, doing that the chuffing noise that lions often do. Kind of like not quite a purr, but like a. I can't mimic it very well without sounding weird. Uh, but they, they. It's called chuffing. Um, it's where like their cheeks kind of like vibrate. Okay. Like they're breathing air out. She's like just doing that really heavy. Her pupils are slit. Um, and she's just like, she's just, she's looking dead at the, the leader. Like, I'm coming for you next, buddy. All right. Well, not if this cultist has anything to say about it. He's going to slash down at you with his scimitar. 
does a 14 hit you? It does not. Okay. And then it is the Fanatic's turn. Uh, he's going to see the... Uh, uh, seeing his uh, own forces numbers dwindle, he's going to try to take out what he thinks is one of the weak ones. Uh, Lamalthoon, give me a wisdom saving throw. Ooh, wisdom saving throw. But I don't want to. Mm, that's good. Oh. It's a natural 20 for a 23. Yep, you're good. Uh, okay. You feel... You sure? You sure I'm okay? Yeah, you, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. You, uh, you feel I'm like... Sure? You feel like a slight crick in your neck, and you're just like... All better. Uh, okay. But he okay. will move his spiritual weapon over to you, Amalfoon, and attempt to attack you with it. Oh, interesting. You see the... Uh, that's cocked. You see the... Uh, that's probably not going to hit either. Does a, uh, a 10 hit you? It does not hit me, no. Yeah. You see the glowing, <laughs> shimmering, crackling energy, greenish-black spear uh, attempt to move and stab into you. But you're able to just a, lazily flick your rapier and, a, and since that divert it away. Even, that doesn't even break my ten plus dex, so I don't even want to. I don't even want to. Um, what's that word? Parry. Parry. I just straight just sidestep it, and it's like, do not touch me with that. <laughs> uh, Lamalthoon, it's your turn. I look to the cult leader and feeling some sort of way um, as I am I look to him and if he's not within 30 feet of me I will use my bonus action to dash uh, or I will he, he would be within 30 feet of you okay, at this point so I can move for okay so yeah so I um, I move up to him and I begin to Fantastic. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Sorry about that. Internet. Howdy ho. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, the last action we did was uh, the Malfoon was about to booming blade the cult fanatic. Correct. Who is leading these cult troops. So go ahead and roll that attack for us. All right. Ooh, that is a nine to hit, which technically becomes an yeah, 11. What's your that does not hit so the cult fanatic, I'm unfortunately. To, I'm going to use one of my votes from last week because okay. I want to hit this man. Sure. Does a okay. 14 Finish hit him. him? Yes, it does. Okay. Just barely. Just hits. right there. All right. And with my damage, that is 10, 12, 14 slashing damage. Uh, I think nice. It's damage. Yeah, I, I can be nuts. I figured it out. I'm yes. a smart person. And uh, yeah, so that is a mighty blow. Uh, he is still on his feet, uh, yes. but he is. He's hurt. He's, you, he sees how far the rapier went into him, and as you pull it back out, he sees the spurts of crimson that are coming out of him, and he knows that he's not going to survive the night, so he's going to take. He's going to attempt to take you down with him if he can. Bring it on. Anything else, Lamalthoon? No, that is all. Alright, Gar. Uh, how many of these smaller guys are left? I two. I away. Two. How close are they to each other? They're standing right next to each other. Okay, I'm going to put them to sleep now because I want this to work. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Does 25 get to the both of them? 25 is enough to put them both to sleep. All right. So you see Gar. Uh, describe how your magic would come about, Gar. Gar, uh, annoyed at the first time that it didn't work, he uh, uh, stops, looks around, and 
besides weaker ones. Yeah, they're gonna work. Pull some uh, pinch of rose petals out of his pocket. And he starts. Blows the rose petals towards them and he starts doing an incantation. And as it's happening, the rose petals just start floating around in front of their faces and they catches their attention and then down they go. Nice. All right, you got two sleepy cultists. Uh, anything else you like to do on your turn? I will also move up next to Lamalthoon again, next to the big bad. Okay. Big bad. Susa slash Brillo. So is everybody down? Uh, nope, you got two sleepy boys, and then you've got the cult fanatic in the back. Cult fanatic in the back, eh? Yep. He's been the one casting spells, too. So I will tell Brillo to take care of him. Okay. Bob! As, as Brillo <laughs> rocket butts forward. forward. <laughs> and uh, roll the attack for Brillo. Uh, in, in a moment, I will attack with Brillo. However, okay. I will walk over to the one. I, I will walk. Sure. Yeah, no, you're very tired. Over to the one that, that Brillo was about to fight but couldn't hit but is now asleep. Okay. And I'll take out my scimitar and just go. Rup. Okay. You have uh, advantage uh, on this attack. Is it a crit because they're unconscious? Uh, let me double check. Assuming it hits. Who de Gras exists in five. I'm going to need that advantage because uh, apparently. Oh, 23 to hit. <laughs> 23 definitely hits. Uh, and sleep does make them unconscious, uh, which means that it's an automatic crit. So that's a total of, uh, what is it? That's 12 damage. All right. So, yeah, just very simply, as you're walking by, just <sighs> you take your schema card, schema card, just go <laughs> right into the neck. Let's go. Hmm. It, was a, then... it, it means anything to you, Gar. It was a peaceful death. They never felt a thing. <laughs> there, beyond redemption. It's true. In this yes. instance, yeah. Uh, all right. So that was your uh, action, Susa. All right. Here goes Brillo with the power, force-powered rend on the master cultist. What's the name of that attack? Power rend. Twenty-two to hit. Oh yeah, that hits. Uh, hold on. I gotta double check what the very... damage is. It's a very anime name, right? Like, Force Power Rin! I know, Force Power Rin! Uh, D8 plus. Oh, not a whole lot of damage. Three Force Damage. Three Damage! So, he braces himself, gets ready, sees this large mechanical contraption charging right at him, braces, and Brillo just kind of like, it brings its. It's it's leg up, you know, up above its head again. In this just weird pose, like it's karate chopping the most. And it comes down, but it like sputters as it's coming down, and it does not apply the full force. And it's just more like you know, someone punching as opposed to force rending. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, but okay. So it does hurt, know, him, but not, not as much as you're it, hoping. But force rend just does sound freaking awesome. <laughs> Right? Force, Force power, power win! Uh, anything else, Susa? Uh, no, that's it. All right. Yane, back up to you. <laughs> you got one sleepy boy on the ground, and you've got the uh, boss in the back. I'm going to go for that boss. All right. Give me a range stabby. Stabby. Range, range, stabby. Oh, um. All about that boss. That I boss. am going to also use. Oh, which one do I want to use? Uh, debating between Hunter's Mark or Multiply Missile. You 
should save your magic for later. Okay, I'll save my magic for later. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be taking any type of sleep time. It's, uh, well, not only that, but it's just this one guy, and he's been pretty well damaged already, and there's five of, five of you and one of him. Fourteen. Fourteen does hit him. He's five piercing. For five piercing. Yeah, so that arrow goes into his chest and penetrates. You can see him just kind of lean over. You know, the blood's still spurting from the grievous wounds that Malfoon gave him in this arrow, and he can tell that he's just barely clinging on. You know, his eyes dangerously flutter, almost permanently closed. And he's kind of got his, his dagger out and just like wildly swinging, trying to keep you guys at bay. Uh, he's not long for this world, Terhana. Terhana would like to viciously finish him off. Okay, give me a attack. A nine. A nine, unfortunately, does not hit. So even though he's just barely able to keep conscious, he does see your kind of... Well, and you kind of just walk up and do this almost executioner-style blow on him. But he's able to just kind of, in this almost like saving Private Ryan moment, just barely push your swear out of the way. And he just kind of swirls around in this crazy ballerina pirouette. Uh, but is able to stay on his feet. Uh, anything else? No, nothing else. Okay. Johanna is, is cursing at him in her native tongue, though. Uh, sleepy boy continues to sleep. Um, yep, 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 yep. The leader sees that things are not going well, but he reaches out towards you, La Malfoon, determined to take one with him. Uh. Ooh. Is this, an, is, is this an attack? Immediately using my reaction to impose disadvantage. Yeah, boy! Uh, yeah, if you this, weren't, Brillo was. Uh, th does it impose disadvantage on all attacks? Or, like, because this, this is a spell attack. Mine just says attacks against someone, not me. Yeah, I believe if it's a targeted spell uh, that uses the spell attack, I believe it still works. Because they're doing shield... You're doing, um... Uh, like defensive, whatever thing, right? Yeah. It just uh, no, I'm anything. using. Uh, it, it, you see his his palm uh, darken as he reaches out towards the mouth end, uh, and he is attempting to cast inflict wounds. It's a, it's a. Yeah, sorry, it's my fighting style. And it just states uh, when a creature you can see attacks another target other than you that's within five feet, you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll. <laughs> Got it. So long as it's actually going to roll, then yes. Oh. So in 5e, there are actions you can take in combat. One is attack. And the other is cast a spell, along with dash, just need dodge, help, hide, etc., etc. Okay. Casting inflict wounds is casting a spell. It is not taking the attack action. It is taking the cast a spell action. Uh, is it inflict wounds a magic attack though, where you actually have to? Roll? It is, but it, but you are casting a spell, not attacking. Okay. That makes sense. So yeah. attacking would mean like you're punching with your fist, stabbing with a dagger, shooting someone with a bow, or you're casting a spell. Those are two distinct, different actions in fighting. I'm good with it. So yes, it, yes, it is a melee spell attack, but you are taking the casting spell action. So at that is where it has it has a disadvantage on attacks, which is a distinct action in five e. I'm going to say that that does not count. Okay. So does a seventeen hit you, Malfoy? Yes. Alrighty. His palm glows black. And we'll take. Thirteen necrotic damage. Okay. And it kind of just it's that like death grip he holds onto you. Just of a of a dead man's fingers just 
gripping your shoulder as hard as possible. And he's just like, you will join the Serpent Queen with me. Uh, with that, the Malfoon, it's your turn. Um, quick question, though. Yes. Out of character, does yes. Hine hear that comment? Yes. Yeah, yeah, he's saying it loud enough. He's saying it to the Malfoon, but it's a threat to all of you. May, may I have a, a speaking... Sure, moment. you have a free action speak to respond to that, like, before Lamalfin kills him right here. Yeah, is that, is that all right with you? Of course, Steve? please. Yeah. Cool. So, Yune points to uh, Seuss and goes, we have our own Serpent Queen. Ooh. Bye. Abomination. Slash. Slash. 13 plus, yep, yeah, so, you're, yes, yeah. yes, uh, that is enough to hit. Uh, it is 14 slashing damage. Oh, that is way more than you needed. So, okay, he's just, you know, Yane, Yane is like, we have our own Serpent Queen, Abomination! What? And you're just like, yeah, describe your final blow to this cultist. As he goes to say, Abominate, you just hear swoosh! And the rapier just flashes across, kind of just under his chin. Abominates, and he's the air shoots out from his throat as opposed to his mouth. And then the blood starts to run down as he realizes his throat has been slashed. And he grips okay. and chokes and falls. Hopefully he locks eyes himself. with yeah. he locks eyes with you the entire time Malfoon. Because and, he can't quite form any words from your slash ooh. and the bubbling and gurgling of the blood coming from his mouth, but So I'll lean down next to him and I'll have the the, the inflict wounds like still kind of there. <laughs> and as he's like on, you know, laying down gargling, something much stronger than you failed to kill me today. You never had a chance. And then I'll just and then I'll just let him bleed out. I won't even finish him off. And just that there's like at least twenty seconds of him just on his knees, just watching the blood drip out of him. Alright. You've got one sleepy boy still standing laying there, but you are out of initiative as I leave that to somebody else. Rillo just sits on him. Bah! Or sorry. Bah! And with him being asleep and Burlo's massive weight and all of that, if you intend to kill, you can have this be a kill. It's not more. It's not really a kill. More of just an accidental crushing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's that moment where, like, you're like, "All right, good job, Burlo. You can take a load off." And it's just like, "Bah!" <laughs> and massive, you know, 400 pound frame just sits on that man's head. And it's just that, you know, when the toothpaste comes out of the tube after you've rolled it up and you're getting the very end of it, <laughs> as um, sprays against the cave wall. Oops. And then I, I will I will cast Mend on Brillo. Who is cleaning? Uh, Who is cleaning Brillo? That's up to Supsa. I'll take care All right. Of you. There's definitely chunks of brain matter in there somewhere. <laughs> it's like lodged right up behind the butt. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> All right, got it. Okay. So, do you all want to take a moment, or are you continuing along your path? Hey, we continue along. Some cultists have already come to uh, investigate and, amb and you know and. Uh, ambush your party. It's up to you if you'd like to, you know, attempt to wave it out and maybe take a breath, or if you want to push forward, maybe ha maybe uh, taking this opportunity to short push rest. your advance. We could short rest or wait. Um, How badly off are you? Uh, it's about, you know, on a scale of one to owie, I took a boo-boo. No, I 
was going to say on a scale of on a scale of one to thirty one, I'm zero. <laughs> uh, hold on. Would you say you're bloody, Lamalthin? Uh, yes, if anyone remembers the old 4th edition mechanic of bloodied, um, I would technically be considered that. However, as a first level fighter, I can make myself... Mm, not more, as bloodied. Not as bloodied. I can make myself more better. So we more don't better. have to use our short rest here if we don't want to. I don't see well, any reason can... to stop. Okay. Then we shall press I, on. I will just use the last of my lay on hands to give you five more health, and then we'll carry on. Okay. And then I will second wind to gain back 1d10 plus one on top of that five. Thank you. I'm, that's going okay. to make me pretty okay, I think. Let's take a look. 1d10. So seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so I'm I've, I ta I've taken one damage from that inflict wounds after all of that. All right. Nice. Alrighty, so you press your advantage, moving along silently but quickly, and you come across the entrance to what seems to be a very large room. But uh, uh, Trahana, as the leader, give me another perception check. Twenty-three. Uh, you for sure. You see, kind of in the shadow, and what looks to be a natural formation. Uh, a small kind of jut off this main path that looks like it might circle around. Um, and you go down it and investigate a little bit to kind of get a clearer picture. And you see that it actually um, leads to what looks to be like a overhang kind of uh, uh, somewhere I'm looking for like edge that would look out into this room where you could kind of stay hidden and observe uh, before you took any actions if you wanted to use that or if you wanted to run in guns charging uh, there's the front door in front of you I believe the word you were looking for was an outcropping yes outcropping yes <laughs> good man Since that is the word of the hour, uh, there, uh, Trahana will go into the outcropping quietly to observe. Yeah, that word's and actually in my notes. Uh, I actually have the word outcrop in my notes. Just couldn't find it. Thank you, Dwayne. Uh, okay. So, yes, uh, you guys are able to, it kind of forces all of you to, you know, sidestep, move narrowly through this uh, jut but you're able to come to this outcropping that overlooks this uh, this is very what it appears to be a very large room. Um, oh, was this was this jut large enough to fit Brillo through, or am I going to have to leave him behind? Uh, we'll say the magical properties of Brillo allow for Brillo to kind of <laughs> Gundam <laughs> Transformer style, like <laughs> and narrow himself so that he can move through here as well. Okay. Um, artificers, everyone, bringing steampunk to 5e. Hey. Um, but yeah, we'll say Br Brillo can transformers and uh, get to with you guys as well. Um, and you overlook this giant area. Devoke. It is day nine of being held captive here. You and the 30 other unlucky people that have been found by these cultists, rounded, gathered up, random adventurers, merchants, poor goblins, other smaller beings that never had a chance against these cultists who came in the night, you know, poisoned them, Cause them to fall into a deep slumber, dragged back to this cavern. Slowly, each day, you watch them s to take one person, tie them to a table, slowly but methodically flay them alive, remove every inch of skin from their body until they're not but walking 
skeletons and muscle matter. Unhook them from the table and then slowly feed them. I'm sorry, then slowly, methodically, inch by inch of their body, taking a torch, burn and roast them until their entire body is cooked. They're kept alive through the combination of magic, dark ritual, and herbs so that they are aware and conscious through this entire process until finally, mercifully, they are fed to the titan spawn that lays in the corner and gorged one by one, one person every day without fail. You've had to watch nine other beings suffer this fate the entire time thinking about escape. Once realizing that escape might not be possible, thinking about the end, thinking about finally seeing your brother again, thinking about finally, finally this can all end. The disappointment, the unsuredness of, of your future. Perhaps this is kinder. Perhaps this is a better end than what you could hope for until as you've been working on your restraints knowing that given the opportunity you've worn them down enough that you could slip out from them you see no your mind must be playing tricks on you hoping that perhaps you know rescue had come even though even though you know that no one knows where you are and even if they were to think to look for you which they wouldn't as you're out uh, on adventure that they could find you. You swear you see the glint of armor and maybe a sword you saw? No. All hope is lost for you know they have selected you next. Tomorrow, tomorrow you will undergo the flaying. You will undergo the roasting. You will be fed to this creature in the corner. Day in and day out, the cultists they walk about this room. They trace runes into the floor. Once they've sacrificed their person for the day, they glorify Mormo in a horrid tongue that you understand to be Titan speech, but you do not know what they say. Every day, the giant circle of glyphs they formed from the ashes of the burned bodies of what's left from the creature eating the bodies that they sacrificed to it is poured into the ground, mixed with the blood of the cultists and forms the glyphs to, to, to use in their ritual, their dark ritual. You do not know what it is hoping to do, but you see them as they perform this ritual. In the middle of the circle goes a box, and in that box you know to be a horrid, something that every time they open the lid of it, you close your eyes, hoping that whatever evil, whatever horridness is inside of it will not cause you to go mad as you can hear the whispers that come out of it. It whispers glory that could be won, whispers fortune, whispers redemption for your tribe, whispers how if you just give in, love me, worship me, accept me as your mother. I am the mother of all serpents. I'm the mother of all creation. Give in. I can be your mother. I can bring you glory. I can show you the way to ultimate power to evoke. Just give in. But you close your mind to it, resisting it, knowing that death is better than becoming this thing's puppet, becoming one of these crazed cultists that worship it. Again, you think you see the glint of armor, but again, you know there's just your mind playing tricks. The rest of you oversee a situation. You see a pen of about 30 to 40 creatures, all humanoid, different variations, some elves, some dwarves, some goblins, some orcs, a manticora or two, all tied up, all in this pen. You see about ten cultists wandering around. You see a large circular area that they do not cross or go into, but there are glyphs that are made into the dirt around it. And at the far end of the room, you see a large creature 
its face rat and almost rat and snake like with a long snoutish head that opens up has four two on each on two on top two on bottom and large uh bicuspid uh incisors that come down it has fiery scales all along its body large powerful forearms that end in claws a swollen belly that is just distended and you can see just just how much if it, you can see things poking out of it how much it's been fed just fed beyond beyond it sh- that it should be able to eat and you see on the table a human halfway flayed no screams come out but you can see its eyes are darting everywhere and its mouth is open as if wanting screams to come out but it cannot can I start working on my manacles oh yeah they're they're right now they're at the point where if you wanted to you could break them apart uh were there any enemies besides the Titan's yeah, you saw. Yeah, you see about ten cultists okay. walking around. Okay, sorry, I didn't hear the part. Okay. Nope, fine. I resist the urge to just run out there and try and help that person that's half laid. I must act quickly. Usa does not resist the urge. How far away is that body? That person? They're across the room. It's so like 120 feet from you. Oh, okay. No, I, I can't make that. A little too far for me. I can do it in two rounds. Has it been? <clears throat> oh well. How long has it been since our fight? Uh, say it took about another like twenty-ish minutes to travel. <sighs> Fuck. All right. So my retreat, my expeditious movement has gone away. Okay. So while we're well, well, like I don't. I'm gonna break the manacles and uh, do I have a can I cast spells now or no uh yeah I mean you have the ability to cast your spells um but for all intents and purposes you know that it is not a winning fight um it's 10 to 1 in that large titan spawn creature uh that's not too far away from you uh which I put a picture of in the uh, chat if you guys want to look at it That is disgusting. And the ma- the manacles are they chaining me that to is the wall, or are they you... chaining us to the uh, me to the other people around? Uh, you're all chained to each other. Oh, um, <clears throat> are we at like a an elevated position, or or could we just like walk into the room? Do or do we need yeah. to climb down or anything? Yeah, you're at a slightly elevated position, but it's kind of one of those things where you could like slide down uh, from the outcropping you're on, and it, like it wouldn't require any like significant kind of athletic feat from you. Trahana's getting kind of antsy and is really wanting me to um, just go down there. Uh, but she's also aware that if she does such a thing, she's putting herself in grave danger. And even her, given her history, she's uh, not wanting to make a repeat of her past. Uh, Gar, you're able, uh, as a paladin, you're able to sense just this unholy aura that comes off of that Titan spawn. Even from here, like the just this entire area that it has kind of lived in for who knows how long now, um, it has completely desecrated this entire area. Um, like it, if this, like th- this entire land would need to be reconsecrated if it was ever to be used for anything ever again. That's how uh, unholy this creature is. Disgusting. 
Yeah, it's actually like besides the stench of like you know death and roasted human flesh in here, there's also just to you there's just the smell of evil unholiness. Far more foul than we could ever imagine. Can we? we we've seen the monster, right? Yes. Can we kill this thing? We need to kill this thing. This is what I was born to do. It must we need die. to at least try. Perhaps if we uh, gathered those people, they might be able to escape as well as help. They've been here. For, they've been here for days, chained up. We we can't ask them to assist us. They're tired and. You can't if ask them run, to stay back. If they run, they might be able to at least divert some of these cultists. If they run... As long as we tell them about the traps. Gar, think about what you're saying. If they run, they run nine days, or they run however many days they've been here, out with exhaustion and hunger into the blood steps, unprepared and exhausted. You're making them run to their death. We kill this monster and run. we help them. They Better could help run us. Away from here than stay in this hellhole. I Death know what is it's their like. Only option at this point. At least they have a chance. I know what it's like to live in chains. They will fight for their freedom. They deserve the right for their own revenge. They get in my way and take away any tactical advantage we have. You know, Lamalthoon, if you are a tactical expert, you won't have to worry about them getting in your way. Mobs take away tactics. Precision strikes are better than... Yes, but if you're as good as you say, you'll be able to work around it. You can see, I, I, the starts to, like, grind his teeth. It's like, <laughs> fine. Whatever the so, child says. Well, then uh, what is our current tactical advantage? Stealth. And surprise. And surprise, yes. Obviously, you guys have never tried to stealth up to a titan spawn before. We're here. It hasn't attacked us yet. That's only because it can't move. Okay, so we strike it quickly. Uh, yes. No, go ahead. I do have a sneak attack. Because, rogue. Yes, uh, tactician, uh, Lamalthoon, give me a perception check. Perceive in the battlefield. That is a 16. Okay. Uh, so you look around at this room. You see uh, that the one doing the flame currently uh, seems to be one of the people in charge. Um, Did the map go away for anyone else? What's that? Did the map go away for anyone else? No. No. Weird. Uh. Need to just refresh. <clears throat> um. But yeah, so uh, the one doing the flaying seems to be in charge. Okay. The one that's standing guard uh, over the prisoners uh, seems to. The armor he wears is like significant. Like he, this guy looks like a knight, and his armor is made of what looks to be um, a combination of the rock and obsidian and tree bark that has winded around. It looks like it's actually used with his body. Um, and it looks to be almost as strong, if not stronger, than Gar's armor. And you I heard see that you he say, has. I heard you say it was made up of the rock. 
Dwayne Johnson? Yeah, so I'm thinking like Dwayne Johnson is like melded into this guy's body. Which is kind <laughs> not of not quite. On his chest you just see. <laughs> Wait, my question uh, is you can is have a deem ad- at CGI. You can, a, you can have a deem advantage for that really good eyebrow. Uh but yeah, so he has just this crazy armor that looks, you know, very formidable and it's gonna keep him safe. Uh as well as the morning star he yields seems to be made out of uh pure granite. Oh, uh, and then uh, most of the rest of the cultists that walk around uh, seem to look like uh, just general, ordinary people that have fallen into the cult of Mormo. Um, and you notice that, you know, like you said, your two advantages are the height, you, the, couple, the advantages you have are the height you have, you the, the stealth you have, and the surprise. And you see that a couple of these cultists are kind of like off lingering in some corners and it might be possible to thin out the herd before you, you know, wage a full scale attack. If done silently, quietly and correctly. I believe that's up to uh, Yene to uh, take some ranged stabbies. I can do that. I can get up close and personal with a few of them. Do you want to go two separate ways and kind of make them wonder where we're coming from? Worst case scenario, one of us fails, serves as a distraction for the other. That's a great idea, Yune. Hmm. Where's the sneaky sneak? If Sosa and Gar wish to stay back as well, I can act as the I just third. Just look at my armor again. I can act as a third prong of a trident attack if we so wish to more quickly like this. to more quickly thin out these extras. I will move up. Did I roll the right as thing? close as possible? Before you tell me to stop. Oh, Sorry, what was that? If, if I may. Yes. Um. I it. I just kind of want to be sitting near the wall, just unmoving. Just, you know, just like so almost statuesque, just watching and waiting, seeing if there's any opening whatsoever. And at the first sign of something, anything, some some ray of hope, I'm going. I would like to shatter these manacles and uh, get up and do some things. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You you've had enough of watching these flames daily occur, uh, so you're. Your eyes and what you're looking at is out away from this forwardness, especially not looking at this creature either that you've been forced to be basically live next to for so long. Um, I rolled a 21 on stealth. Okay, so are, are you attempting to sneak up to one of these guys? Yes, I'm wanting to sneak up to one to do a sneak attack. To try to take them out while Yane does their own reach stabby. Yeah, silent reach stabby. Okay. Um, so with 21, you're able to slide down the uh, outcropping. There is a couple of uh, pebbles that kind of roll down with you and make a little noise. Um, it doesn't seem to draw anyone's attention specifically. And uh, you kind of time it right as one is walking by, able to just. Uh, plunge your sword into them. Give me a, uh, an attack advantage. This will be a sneak attack, correct? Yes. Okay. 
Oh, oh I'm sorry. I set yours up for you. Still have to do the roll for the weapon, and then you just add that's the but you add that button. Oh, okay. Sneak attack. I like how you titled it "Sneaky Sneaky." <laughs> of course. Okay. My attack uh, is above that, by the way. Would I? I don't have a dagger per se. Would I just use my bite claw for that then? If you want, or you can use your sword. Like it. it yeah. It is. Okay. I'm gonna be sneaky with a giant sword. <laughs> I mean, I could picture, like, since you are a kitty with claw stabbies, you like, like Wolverine. Uh, yeah, sixteen definitely hits the cultist. So, uh, and it's at advantage. It'd be, it'd be at advantage as well. So, if you want to roll the advantage. Oop. Oh, okay. Good morning. <laughs> Uh, 14 plus sneak attacks so and 19. Yeah, so very easily. That's just, just able to get behind this guy and move your sword all the way through, covering his mouth so that his uh, screen doesn't get loose. And he just slumps to the ground like a pile of potatoes. Uh, Yane, uh, 26 definitely hits. Uh, 6 plus the sneak attack is 7. Um, that is not going to be quite enough to. Uh, take that, take the cultist down. Uh, if anybody else, you'd see, see this arrow kind of just go into this guy's back, and it punctures the lung, luckily, so he's not able to quite, quite cry out for help, but you can see that he's, like, you know, starting to, like, limp over to another, another cultist. If anyone wants to follow that up and attempt to take him down. Uh, I was hoping to also kind of move up with them and stealth. Um. Okay, give me a stealth check. 14. 14. So you sliding down the outcropping as well causes a couple bigger stones to tumble and split that and then there's just that moment where the cultist turns sees you sliding down sees the cult sees the cultist that you may hit with the arrow like limping for him and he's just like silently screaming with his eyes like Aah! and he just kind of puts two and two together Intruders! Intruders in the intruders in the cave! Intruders in the cave! Uh, it's at this moment, <laughs> uh, 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 Devoke, that uh, you see you saw the first cultist kind of slump down. You're like, huh? And then it's when you hear the you heard the twang of the bow go off. You bust open your manacles easily enough. You've been working on them for nine days. It's very easy for you to just bust them open. Uh, and I am going to unleash a thing. Sure, yeah, you can get this uh, off before uh, the initiative starts here. Uh, going to burn a uh, sorcerer's point, meta magic point, and chaos bolt, and I'm going to choose uh, the head cultist and then another cultist. Okay. And have to roll. Excuse me. I'm... Apologies, I gotta set this up properly next time. Uh, plus uh, one d6. And so uh, so uh, because the chaos bolt hit, the chaos bolt is going to be poison damage. Uh, and because I rolled two sixes on the d8s, that hits another person for okay. the same amount of damage. Yeah, Chaos Bolt is nasty. It's a spell that was added with Xanathar's. And it's uh, it's pretty nice. It is. It is. Or it is the standard nice. spell. Uh, uh, and that goes off again. And this is all... Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. Yeah, Xanathar's. Yeah, this is Xanathar's. Special. Uh, okay, so that's the first Chaos. Bolt Volley does 13 damage to the Head Cultist. 
18 damage to another cultist and 14 damage to another cultist. And then because I spent my metamagic point on a twin cast, I can do this to one more person. Seeing as it, if it, or, uh, as long as it doesn't bounce to another person. And it did not. So, and then, whoop, 13 damage to a third cultist. Alright, so, here's the series of events. Terhana sneaks up on the first cultist, is able to completely impale them with her sword, cover his mouth, cultist goes down. Uh, Devoke, you see this cultist slump over. You break your chains. You hear the twang of a bowstring, and another cultist kind of move, like jut forward of their own, not of their own accord, spin around and attempt to go to a third cultist. And this is where you see a pale white elf with long white hair come sliding down this outcropping that you've noticed before, rapier in hand, just almost like that cinematic moment with the hair blowing in the wind, Hell going yeah. forward for a killing blow on this on this guy you see the third cultist you're going to take all this information yell intruders intruders in the cave and that's where you're just like this is it this is the moment you've been waiting for the moment of poking you might come to you if you just were prepared with your recently shattered chains you just all of you see this large orc stand up rip their chains apart and just in, in each hand summon this glowing rainbow colored orb that as it swirls the first two grow green and he hurls them at two different cultists and this you just see as the uh orb splashes onto them the green coalesces and forms into this solid poison that drenches them from head to toe and just immediately dissolves them into a pile of just like a human paste on the ground two of them dead you see him whirl around a third rainbow-colored orb in his hand and splashes it on uh, a third cultist. Again, the poison just going across their entire body, melting them to the ground. And he comes back around with a fourth orb and throws it at the guy doing the flame. It, all, it doesn't completely pastify that guy, but you see that the poison hits him, and he turns around, dagger in hand. Good. I was hoping to do you today. <laughs> but now, now you will just die like the rabid dog you are. For Momo! Everyone roll initiative. <laughs> I have effectively rolled the same initiative every time we have rolled initiative for this campaign. Nice. You have. That's impressive. At least it, you're consistent. It would be impressive if it was better. No, it's impressive because it's consistent. Okay. Ah! My total initiative is a 25. Wow. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Let's call. Okay. This guy is that. And this guy is. Okay. So, uh, 
Yune, Gar, and Susa and uh, Brillo. You were all still on top of the outcropping. Um, but soon you've just slid down. You're in uh, fighting range of one. Uh, we'll see you quickly dispatch the one. Yune only had like two hit points left in that guy uh, that they shot. Uh, you just quickly dispatch him real quick. He's already basically dead anyway. Gotcha. Uh, turn around uh, and you see the orc shaman who has slipped his bonds and just completely obliterated three of these cultists and has turned on the fourth. And how this turns out and the combat that will ensue and whether or not our heroes will be successful in not only rescuing the new powerful ally they might be able to make, but as well as defeat this titan spawn that is so clearly evil in the cause of this hatred and sacrifice, as well as locate this piece of Mormo and potentially either rescue or destroy it, that'll have to wait until next week. Oh my god. I just, I got the blue ball, you guys, roll initiative, get it all set up, and no. I was wondering about that. You are pure evil, you child of Mormo, you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I got to splat for people. Mormo. I'm happy. I, Hell yeah. I am Mormo. <laughs> I have one thing to say. Bell Smith was nicer. Oh, yeah. Gods are always going to be nice to the Titans. All right. We must leave our adventurers as they contemplate their next steps and how they will continue to navigate this perilous world of Skarn. We'll have to wait until next week to see what happens. It has been a pleasure telling the story to you, listener. We hope you enjoyed what you saw and heard as much as we enjoyed performing it for you. Thank you for watching and listening and to our Patreon supporters, Weapon M, Don Arnetto, and David. Let's hear from our players now, once again, your name, handle, character, and where people can find you outside of Warful Tales. Good evening, everyone. I was Dwayne, or I am Dwayne. Uh, you guys can find me on the internet at Made of Kimchi. I was playing Susa the Artificer, and the next time that you will see me will be tomorrow playing the last episode of the current deviant series you're all done yeah oh okay it sounds like you were gonna say something else sorry um hey everybody i've been yune and uh you can find me all over the internet as ever as changeling ever and uh, you can find me again Sunday evening playing my Cult of Ecstasy Mage. Really, really looking forward to it. And you can also find me on Etsy, Neat and Co Designs. Neat as in, hey, ever. That's really neat face paint. The end. Not bad. It's pretty good. I like it. Hey everybody, I'm Pinky, and tonight I was playing as Trahana. You can find me all over the interweb as PinkyPie88. And you can find me next time on Wednesdays with Space Lord Pajamas playing Sid, who is really awesome and recently grew back an arm. Also has some pretty good face paint. Thank you. Uh, hello everybody, I am Steve, uh, tonight I played the Malthoon, who um, is a little bit different than when we started this camp, this uh, session, even. Um, next you will find me on Sundays, um, playing the Punch Man of our mage group, so come and check that awesome mess out. And who knows, maybe I can convince Patty to uh, stream some us getting some dubs on Siege soon, because we have perfected Smoke Squad. Yes. And again, another person with good face paint. Nice to know. And I am Devin. You can find me online at Sword of Sully. And I have been playing Gar. Next time you'll see me is here again tonight, but next week. And I have been J3Billion. Super excited to be back. Uh, you're going to be able to find me next Thursday as a disembodied voice for a lot of, a lot of that. And uh, yeah, that's that going to be me. I have been fun. Small baby wave. Small baby wave. Thank you. 
I have been Patty Shank underscore, and it'll be another week before you're able to find out what happens to our lovable rapscallions. But in the meantime, I encourage you to please watch Vocal Tales' other shows, which include Saturday is Deviant, the Renegade, Radiation Burns. Sunday is Mage, Monday, Cyberpunk. Tuesday is Scion Dragon with yours truly. Wednesday, Infinity. Thursday, Kimchi Grimdar Chronicles. And Friday, next week, same time, same place, you'll find us playing Scarlands again. Do, do we get bacon and zombies too? Ah, uh, yes. Turn in, tune in Sundays in the morning for bacon and zombies. Although, I think bacon it's and now... survival with yeah. Sizz It's sizzle and survival. I like bacon and zombies better. It was not a unilateral decision. It wasn't a democracy. It was a. Uh... As Sean likes to say, it was a Sean, Sean, a, Sean, a place. As Sean likes to say in our personal life, whenever he makes a decision, I am democracy. Yeah. There you go. All right, now for our true fans, we shall vote. Our players will each nominate one other player, but new to Vocal Tales, you, the audience, can vote for your favorite player as well. We shall tally the votes in chat after we sign off and award our players appropriately. So, in the same order as usual, please pick someone to nominate. Hi, Dwayne. I'm going to vote for the silent star of this show, John, because you got to play for like 10 minutes. <laughs> and I melted four people, okay? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. This <laughs> important, important point, five minutes, four people, that is well ahead of the curve. Yeah, it's more than I did. And I played for almost three hours. <laughs> I'm gonna give my vote to Dwayne because when you did that snake speech, that was pretty freaking cool. That just stuck in my head. I loved that, and please do more some other time. It would be amazing. I will do more. I am going to give my vote over to words. Uh. Steve's character, because I completely blanked on name. I'm so sorry. Uh, because sorry. I you thought it was pretty... Yes. Uh, I thought it was pretty awesome for, uh, you know, your character just kind of like, I'm fine. Leave me alone. Stop it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, man. Uh... Thank you so much. Uh, for me, though, I think I have to give it to a buddy who decided to go back to back multiple times in combat tonight. Gar, take my vote for always being there to give me protections when you can. Thank you, thank you. And I'm gonna give my vote to Ever for schooling Lamalthoon. No, they're not any reason. Just die. Boop. And last but certainly not least, self-proclaimed. Um, I have to give my vote to Gar uh, just for the unsolicited cavity search. I thought that was hilarious. All right. All of those moments and more were quite amazing. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed our story right. tonight. <laughs> And we look forward to seeing you next week, same time, same place, to continue the tale. Until next time, may Corian light your way, stay safe, stay adventurous, and make your choices.